Good afternoon, first graders. I hope everybody's doing well. I've got a little bit of a project lined up for you that you can do at home if you want. It's not required, but it's something fun if you have a little bit of free time to do today. So we're going to be thinking back to a guy that we talked about a long, long, long time ago in class, and we're going to be looking at the works of an artist with the last name Mondrian. So I'm going to pop up a picture right now. Now notice in that picture that Mondrian was using shapes, squares, rectangles, and also very specific colors. In addition to black and white, he was obviously using the three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. So let's see what we need to get our project done today. Don't worry, you don't need all of this stuff. All you really need today is a piece of paper or anything that you could actually make marks on. I'm going to use that cardboard that I got out of the recycling bin. Um, and all you really need to draw with is a pencil. Now if you have anything else, cool, feel free to use it. Colored pencils, crayons, markers. Um, I'm going to use my pencil though in the cardboard and we're going to pretend that I don't have any of this other stuff over here and I'm going to show you how you could use a recycled magazine or a catalog to fill in some of your squares. What you don't see here that we need is also a pair of scissors and a bottle of glue. So go ahead and find those things. If you don't have scissors, that's okay. We can actually rip paper that'll work for this project today. And if you don't have glue, tape will work just fine. All right, so there was one thing I forgot to tell you. I had a book and some markers in that picture. Um, in case you don't have a ruler at home, the edge of a book will work to draw some straight lines. If you don't have a book or a ruler, if you have one of these packages that are made out of that kind of stiff cardboard, that'll give you a straight edge as well. If you don't have any of those, that's okay, because you can just freehand your lines today anyway. All right, I'm gonna use the bare minimum on my project. So I've got cardboard, I do have scissors. If I don't have glue, I could replace glue with tape. I am gonna stick with glue for now. I'm not even gonna use a pencil. I changed my mind on that. And I do have my recycled paper. So the easiest way to go about doing this project right now, if you didn't have black and blue, yellow, red markers at home, would be to do exactly what I'm doing. We're gonna cut out a bunch of different rectangles and squares. Please be very careful with your scissors. You don't want to cut your fingers. Nine rectangles and squares for now. I've got my nine pieces and I've got my glue. So I'm gonna put a dot of glue, not too much, just a dot, on the back of each one of these. And then I'm gonna kind of arrange them to fit on my paper or in this case, my cardboard. If you have longer pieces like this, go ahead and use a couple dots. Okay, got all my stuff glued down. If I didn't have glue, some tape on the top or bottom of each one of these pieces would work just fine. So if you wanted to make this project a little bit more difficult and you did have access to magazines or catalogs, try to find some Mon Mondrian colored paper that you could actually cut out in blue, yellow, red, and black. Now, I'm just gonna keep on going with this. My pieces are indeed glued down right now, but now I need to go in and make some of those lines. So this might be a good time if you had that ruler or something else with that straight edge um, to get ready to use that. We are gonna let our glue dry for about eight minutes and then we're gonna come back to this thing. So I'll catch up with you in eight minutes. That glue is mostly dry at this point. So now I'm gonna go ahead and draw some of those lines that Mondrian used. And I know it's gonna be hard to see on that camera, but there's one right there. This is a good spot if you did have markers or permanent markers or something like that. Um, you could definitely use those so we could see your lines a little bit better. So as you're drawing your lines, you're gonna have a lot of different things happening here. The easiest way to do it is just to put your ruler on the sides of your paper and draw a line kind of coming off the edge. I just realized I missed that one, so let me show you what I'm talking about. You draw it off the edge of that piece of paper so we have that line that's in the empty space. Now obviously if you've gotten this far, it's because you probably have a pencil. So take that pencil and you can actually use that pencil to color in some of those boxes to look black. Obviously a pencil's not black, but it's dark enough gray that I think it'll work in a pinch. Got a few of these pieces colored in. 
Um, obviously, at this point, if you had more colors, you could add more colors. Um, even if you wanted to get a little bit more creative today and add some purples and greens in there, go ahead and feel free to do that. But this is just kind of a quick piece that is done in a Mondrian style, obviously making do with kind of what we have in some pretty extraordinary circumstances. All right, I did kind of come back in and cheat a little bit, and I did use my markers just so you could see um, a little bit of what you could be creating if you had a lot of mo a lot more materials at home. So, um, one of the neat things about Mondrian, in addition to black and white, he did use the primary color. So take a second. Do you remember why these are important colors? Just in case you forgot, the primary colors are important because these colors can't really be made by adding other colors together to mix them up. Um, now we can use these to mix these colors together to create other colors. So, blue and red would give you purple if you were mixing paints. Red and yellow would give you orange if you were mixing paints. And, my favorite, Yellow and blue would give you green if you were mixing paint. So, just some fun stuff to think about with Mondrian. I gotta tell you, I certainly miss reading you guys' stories and working with you in class, but I'm hoping to see you again real soon. If you want to send some examples of your artwork to this email address, I would love to see it. Parents, please remember that these projects are not required. They're just resources for you to use at home if your kids need a little bit of art to break up the day. So. Take care. Hope to see you soon.